Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. So if you followed the channel, you know that I normally do these free program intros, which by the way, this program is available for free on my website. Normally I do these just with raw training footage and a voiceover and some beats and stuff. If you prefer that style of video, let me know. I'm trying this because I think I'm a little bit more comfortable, I think, in, in this element uh, now, I guess, than I am you know, just behind the computer doing the voiceover. And hopefully this will give me some opportunities in this video and in future videos to do a little bit of demonstrations with things. I'm actually gonna talk about back extensions and demonstrate those a little bit in this video. And I don't know that voiceovers give me that ability. So I think that there's pros and cons. Let me know which one you prefer. It'll only hurt my feelings a little bit. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go with, uh, with whichever one I think uh, people seem to like more. So anyway, we are gonna be talking about week one of this block. Uh, I, I'm not gonna cover everything here. Uh, there, there's a lot of little details here and there within the videos, but if you have things that you do think that I glanced over that you wish that I would have talked more about, again, leave me a comment. That'll help direct me in future videos, or I may be able to answer you in those comments. So day one here, I think, is kind of where uh, right away things get a little bit interesting. So as the title of the video probably has already uh, spoiled a little bit, I have started training at a commercial gym. I I've started doing this probably halfway through my previous block. And a lot of the reasons were associated with some of the things that I've mentioned with my pecs, even like elbows to some degree, that I, I think I've been struggling a little bit in my home gym, being able to do all of the accessories that I really have thought would be really productive for getting myself healthier and stronger. And, and I mentioned this in my home gym video that what I have here as far as home gym stuff is better than almost anybody will ever have access to in the home gym. And I still feel like there's a lot of places that I don't know, I, I have blind spots or I'm just missing some pieces particularly with upper body pressing accessories. Now I think I'm, I'm fine and comfortable with all the, the rowing, the back accessories that I have, but it's still really convenient to be able to go over the commercial gym and not have to set all those things up. So for day one, how I'm doing, and really all of my upper body days, how I'm doing it, is I'm doing my bench pressing here at home and then just, it's like five minutes away. I'm traveling over to a commercial gym to be able to do my accessories. And I can tell you with 100% certainty that even though I have pretty good stuff in here, I'm training so much better and I already feel healthier being able to do some accessories that feel a whole lot better. In particular, actual dumbbells. Uh, I, I know you guys have, have been interested a lot in my, uh, my spot grips that I have uh, for, the, for this gym. And, and they're great, right? Like I, I wouldn't be able to have ever done any sort of like dumbbell work in here, but they're kind of awkward, right? And the plates are big and everything. Switching over to dumbbells has immediately made my upper body feel so much better. Uh, like just right away working with dumbbells on, on the bench press, my pecs just felt like they were working immediately and kind of like in the right spots that I was kind of having some uh, discomfort. And, and I mean, over the course of like two weeks, I, I would say I, I'm basically healed in my pecs. We'll see where that goes. Um, but, but it's been really encouraging, really exciting that I can actually do these, these pressing exercises and use some machines and get in some like low impact volume. Uh, and, and I'm just feeling significantly better right away. So the feet up bench press that I have here is still about, you know, some volume overall, um, spacing it a little bit further away than I did in my last block from my heaviest work kind of into the week. Um, but, but starting to build in a little bit of intensity uh, with that, that, that top single there, but a little bit of mitigation with load with it being feet up. So now being two blocks out from my next competition, I'm wanting to get a little bit more exposure to some of those heavier things and kind of just be ready to turn it up in the next block. So the biggest stuff here, and I'll probably reiterate it in different ways on future bench press days, is just how valuable right now I'm seeing my accessory stuff at the commercial gym. Just everything feels so, so much better. Uh, and you know, I'm having a lot of fun with the pump stuff and everything. I'm not, I'm not always able to film everything the way that I, that I would be able to, uh, you know, just trying to respect other people or just even me being self-conscious in there, but I'll try to get some videos as much as I can. So 
that I think is kind of going to be the big theme for the week. I'll, I'll be able to talk a little bit more with specifics here and there, but, but that day one, I think is the, the illustration of the main stuff that I'm going after right now. And just like my, how to maximize your potential video. That's kind of what I'm trying to do at the moment. So, um, day two is kind of my traditional secondary squat day. And what I'm leaning into a little bit here is giving myself more opportunities to make the belt squat harder. Uh, day one in, or day two, I guess, the, the first squat day in this block is extra light. Um, my, my brother's bachelor party was this weekend, so I came back and, and did this session kind of immediately after that. Uh, so some of the loads are, are lighter than they, than they would be, but I'm giving myself an extra set of squats I'm going to try to keep the RPE on those squats a little bit lower and then push the belt squats a little bit harder. So as I've mentioned in all my videos previously, I have found so, so much value in the belt squatting and my squat strength, being able to push those hard, get in that leg volume. Um, I, I have hypothesized before that if I squatted differently, maybe just higher volume squats in general would be pretty productive for me, but I tend to feel like I get pretty beat up from squats themselves and have found the supplement to be very, very clean with just adding in belt squat volume and pushing it really hard. So in this block, and I guess even heading into the corrupted strength meet, I'm gonna be holding back on this secondary day on my squats, just trying to lean into the skill component of my squatting, um, not letting the intensities get very high. I probably would not get above 600, I, I don't know, very often at all, or I'm really not gonna try to. Um, but with that in mind, I'm gonna try to push my belt squats a as hard as I can, and, and that really has given me pretty direct returns um, all the time. So. The third exercise on the day is back extensions, which I think people have seen popularized. Chance Mitchell, I guess, is probably the main one who has popularized these. I'm gonna talk more about technique, uh, mostly because I filmed it at the, is, I guess, my deadlift day uh, later in the week. So we're gonna talk about technique on that day. But I can talk about um, maybe one of the reasons why I've switched to them and kind of how I've found value. So. I'm a huge advocate proponent of people doing a lot of hinge work. Uh, you know, RDLs and stiff leg deadlifts are, are really my go-to, particularly stiff leg deadlifts. And I've seen kind of direct carryover to my deadlift very, very quickly. But heading into, um, I, I guess, two blocks ago, heading into um, nationals, I, I was getting fatigued, even somewhat mentally fatigued, near the end there, that, that the last like two weeks of training, stuff was getting pretty hard, pretty heavy. And I wanted to continue doing that hinge work and training it hard, but I was just kind of feeling like, man, I need just a little bit of extra space here, right? Like I, I don't want to drop the load so much on these stiff leg deadlifts that, that now I'm not like training them hard enough to really add any value but I, I wanna keep working this kind of hinge mechanic. I have enough upper back work. I'm not really you know, too worried about uh, you know, back strength overall. So I switched. I, I switched in like the last two weeks to doing back extensions instead of the stiff leg deadlifts. And, and I found them to be a really, really good substitute. So I think that that is, I don't know, maybe, maybe the big thing that people should think about here is that the back extension is not better than other stuff but I think that it is a good opportunity in the same way that belt squatting is a great opportunity for me that I can train the back extension harder and probably with more volume, just kind of more total work to where I can get what would probably be, you know, a similar training effect, at least from a hypertrophy standpoint on my hamstrings, my glutes, you know, back to some degree, um, get, get good carryover from those maybe not quite as direct, into my competition lifts without the, the cost associated with it. Now, that's not super black and white, right? Like sometimes there, we, we need to take some of those risks to be able to really get stronger, but especially heading into competition, I, I think that that is a really good substitute for a lot of people, myself included, uh, but I'm, I'm certainly gonna still continue to do a lot more of the, the hinge work uh, overall, and, and I think really most people should. So anyway, I, I would still probably rank, you know, stiff leg deadlifts and those kind of things above back extensions, but time and place, and I, I think that, that it's a, a really, really good tool for a lot of people. So 
Um, day two is, or day three, second bench day of the week, is, is really just gonna be in all my blocks, and, and generally speaking, you know, if you're a client of mine, you probably see this. This is the, the lowest priority bench press day. That it's really just about reps, really kind of getting into a groove. And in particular, with myself, having some of the pec things, the elbow things, I really have not felt like I've been in a great groove overall for a little bit now. So this kind of moderate-ish rep range should allow me to find that, like just kind of get that flow and get the confidence with bench press going. And then, you know, accessories that, that aren't incredibly taxing overall. Um, this day is, is meant to be my lightest day. And I think if you're doing this one, if you're following this program, I would try to keep that in mind, right? Not necessarily looking for a linear progression every week on your sets of five on bench press, sets of four on bench press. Still trying to train those accessories hard, but realistically we're looking to set up other good days within the week overall here. So day four is uh, deadlift day. And, and I actually had a, a good amount of difficulty in my last block. Um, I, I, was, I was struggling to do top singles. Uh, I, I was having some like glute pain that I actually don't, still don't know what it is. I, I feel it primarily when I squat um, and actually not during the squat for the most part, mostly just like when I'm standing up at the top of the squat, I kind of feel like kind of crampy within my hip. Uh, and, and I've felt it for a while, months now, but it hasn't really impacted me, but I've never felt it deadlifting. So coming back from my competition, I think my first week back, I, I got it pretty bad. I think I did my top single, it's relatively hard, and then got like some like, bad pain where I, I basically had to quit deadlifting for the day. So the following week I said, okay, well, I don't wanna do that. I'm not gonna take the risk. Let's just do ascending sets. Cool, it was fine. Week three, did a single again, feeling pretty good, working up to it, and got that same pain in my, in my glute. And, and so I just bailed on singles. So like three more weeks of training, didn't do any more singles. It was able to work up to a, a pretty good set of five on deadlifts and ended with nearly 900 on the deadlift bar. Um, which I guess is another, another thing the deadlift bar can help with is it just doesn't beat you up quite so much. Um, so I didn't have any hip pain there. So this block is a representation of that to where I'm still unsure it, what my glute hip whatever is going to do. And I didn't want to just put in a program that was going to have, you know, top singles and, you know, back down heavy work or whatever, and then like have to adjust. So my plan here was, I ended on doubles, but doubles or triples for ascending sets to hopefully give myself a little bit of that buffer and, and have options with my training and still be able to get heavy. So that's the objective here is to, to do the doubles, hopefully use them all with my grip and kind of get my grip strength going again. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I'm definitely gonna be treating that top double like a genuine top set and hopefully getting it somewhere in like the 340, 350 range would be, would be really, really good for me as my plan. So start off with 300 kilos. Uh, you know, of course, I'm not really super interested in, in the starting point for the block. So everything felt good there. Um, and keeping in the, the, the high rep deadlifts that, that I've been doing for a little bit. And, and if you need a little bit more on why I think those are valuable, I would watch the how to pull slack video that I posted a few weeks ago. Uh, I think that talks about a little bit where it's a kind of the, the skill acquisition aspect of it for me and kind of like being able to allow myself to relax and get into a good position. And so that's really the, the total design of that day for the deadlifts. So what I did want to talk about on this day is how to actually perform the back extensions in a way that is most effective for everyone. So. I think the name back extension is probably not the right word for this because sometimes we see people just purely going after back extension. And what we really want to be training with this is hip extension to really target the glutes and the hamstrings. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate some ways in which we can target each of those, either glutes more or hamstrings more. But first of all, if you are in a commercial gym uh, or just kind of around, if you see people doing this like huge extension with their back, you're not going to work your hamstrings and, and your glutes as effectively as you could, right? Again, it's not to say that you're not working your hamstrings and glutes, but you're really shifting a lot of the emphasis and your back. And I've talked about this in previous videos. Most of the time, I, I can't think of an occasion to where I've thought that somebody actually has a weak back, 
right? If you perceive that your back is weak, almost always it's the opposite. Is this your hamstrings, your glutes, those are weak. If you're like really rounding in your deadlifts, it's not that your back is weak, it's that your hamstrings and your glutes are weak and that you're not doing a good job bracing and leveraging, pulling slack, all of those kind of things. And your back is probably very strong because you're not doing those other things well and your back is having to pick up the slack. So us doing something, an exercise like back extensions to where we're really, really going after extension through the, the concentric aspect of the, of the lift, I, I think that that is just, I don't know, it, it's really not gonna be as nearly as productive as targeting the hamstrings and the glutes a lot more effectively. So how do we go after that? And it's actually going to be by rounding the upper body more staying in deflection, keeping the rib cage down, and trying to feel like your hips are extending into the pad in order to get your shoulders moving up. Now, a cue that I really like to use here is that there's a string in the middle of my back, kind of like just below maybe my shoulder blades. And in the videos, hopefully you can see where that string is attached. And that string is pulling the middle of my back up to the ceiling before anything else. So before my shoulders, before my head, the middle of my back is trying to be the main thing leading the way. This will help keep you in that flexed upper back position and it will dramatically improve the way that you can use your glutes and your hamstrings to be able to extend your body and actually get your shoulders to move up. Beyond that, I think we can actually manipulate what you're doing with your legs a little bit to be able to feel different muscles a little bit better. So, and th this is true, by the way, whether you have a 45 degree back extension or the, the horizontal back extension, they're, they're both gonna work the same. It's just gonna be a little bit harder in certain areas, right? So I guess just conceptually, the lift is going to be the hardest when you are parallel with the ground, right? So with a uh, horizontal, or with a, uh, yeah, horizontal back extension here, it's gonna be hardest at the very top of the lift, right? With a 45 degree back extension, it's gonna be a little bit harder through the middle. That, that doesn't really matter quite so much. It just the, the, the loading may be slightly different from person to person and machine to machine. They're, they're both gonna be very effective for the same reasons, kind of personal preference here. Um, so the straighter that your legs are, right? We're still assuming that the upper body is doing the exact same thing. The straighter that your legs are, you're gonna work the hamstrings uh, preferentially, right? A little bit more than the glutes. The more that you turn your toes out and the more that you flex your knees, and I, I would say flex, if your knees are slightly relaxed is probably better than a very flexed position. You'll be able to get your glutes a little bit more. And essentially it just comes down to the stretch on the hamstrings, right? So if your hamstrings are, or if your legs are fully stretched, fully straight, right? Then your hamstrings will have a little bit more length associated with them and they'll just be trained a little bit harder. Turning out the feet sometimes just helps people feel their glutes and kind of get that, uh, I, I guess, the external rotation and everything that the glutes assist with a little bit and the, the abduction. So both of those things can really help feel specific muscles. I would encourage people to do the little bit more glute dominant version. Basically, I think that it's a little bit easier for us to target the hamstrings, like just with other exercises, we're doing stiff leg deadlifts or we're doing RDLs. I think that we get a good amount of work there. And, and the glutes, I think somewhat at times are under trained, that, that we can just, they have a little bit more capacity for us to target those. So I think it's probably productive to shift it a little bit more towards the glute stuff and a little bit less towards the hamstring stuff. That's personal preference. I, I mean, that's what I would encourage you to do. If you really, really like the hamstring version more, fine, so be it, they're, they're pretty equal. For me, really straight legs is pretty uncomfortable. I really don't like how it feels on the back of my legs, kind of across the backs of my knees. Um, but anyway, I, I think that the, the back extension, like I stated earlier, has a lot of value for lots and lots of people kind of as a substitute to you know, extra volume in your hinge position and you know, hamstrings and glutes, where we may be kind of running out of that capacity when we're doing stuff like stiff leg deadlifts and RDLs. So moving on to day four here. Um, this, this day I think is probably a good example of, I don't know, easing in to, to what your competition lift should be if you're coming back from injury, right? I don't know that I would consider myself injured, but 
yeah, I don't know that I'm fully healthy either. So the way that this day is really set up is that there's gonna be a lot of sets of bench press, but without very high intensity. And I actually have it written to where I'm only gonna be resting for two minutes. Now, I haven't done this day yet. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm doing it after I film this. Uh, but, but the concept here is being able to create intensity, like just kind of general effort, without the load aspect of it, right? So six doubles, we'll call them cluster sets with it being a two minute rest. Um, you know, th there's, a, there's versatile definitions there. But I should be able to be feeling like I'm having to execute in the same way that I would like harder doubles or singles to where I'm having to kind of keep that intensity up and move pretty fast. And it should help me practice the effort that's needed for harder doubles without the potential intensity that may be bugging me. So hopefully through the course of this block, I just get a lot more skilled. And, and I think we'll see that, like the example of it or, or the representation of that skill will show up on the single, right? So I'm gonna be taking the single very seriously and then the back down work is, is not going to be super hard on its own, but should allow me that opportunity to practice and, and recover some of the skills I lost when I've had to reduce some of the total work. Um, and then everything else, like the, the close grip incline and everything, just stuff that, that I think you know feels good. Again, more dumbbell bench press that feels really good. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of back accessories, I'm still going after those. And I think you'll see here that I'm bringing my own handles to the gym uh, and even strapping up on some machines and stuff because you know, I, I think that the, the accessories that I have in here are probably better than what a lot of times they have at the gyms. But I mean, the machines and all those things are, are very, very nice. So if you do train at a commercial gym, I still think that, that there are some things that you can add to make things feel a little bit better and more productive for us overall. So if you didn't know that the handles that I'm using are the prime handles, uh, and I just bought some little like moving straps from, from a, a, I don't know, tractor supply or something for, for the, uh, attaching them to the machines and it's been pretty useful. I've liked, I've liked those a lot. So finally for the week, day five is the primary squat day and kind of in the same way of, of the deadlifts, I'm just doing a, uh, a heavy, a top double for this. I, I, I kind of bailed a little bit on my last block. I, I had singles planned in my last block, but because of some of the disruptions and how my, my glute was feeling, and uh, like kind of, I don't know, caution heading into the end of the week. I just said, oh, look, I'm not gonna do the single with it. Um, I'm, I'm not totally trusting how I'm feeling. I'm gonna do ascending doubles in that block with a pause, just kind of get myself out back into a groove. And I ended up feeling very, very good with my squats. I, I squatted 310, I guess, for a double at the end of last block. So great, good progress. So I'm taking that again without the um, planned ascending. I guess I'll still be doing it to some degree but I think I will be going after this double a little bit more. But what it should allow me to do with the double instead of a single is hold back just a bit, right? Instead of, instead of the single making me want to, to be more aggressive than I should at times or you know, kind of turn loose at times, the double should kind of keep that in check. And then after it, I'm doing sets of five for the same reason that you know, a lot of the other stuff is in here, just trying to maintain that flow and kind of get back into what I feel like is a, a good pattern with my lifts and kind of confident with my lifts because of some of the disruptions and everything from last block. So I think that is the, the big thought here overall that so much, I've, I've had this question before, right? That sometimes people will look at the program and they say like, wow, it looks a lot different than your previous program. And I was like, I don't really feel that way. I, I feel like the stuff that I'm writing is a representation of what I felt in the last block. The concepts that I'm using are still very much the same, but like, you know, if the rep ranges change and things like that, it, it, it's me feeling out my response to the last block. Right, that it, you know, even if it was successful in some ways, there's always ways that I thought that it could have been better. And so that's where we see some of the manipulations in loading, you know, set schemes, rep schemes, percentages, you know, total intensity, those kind of things. And so I, I think that that's why I want to make these videos is for people to not just look at it and say like, you know, David's just throwing numbers on there. I'm, I'm trying to respond to the last thing that I did to continue to move forward and keep the good stuff and then respond to the stuff that I, I don't think was quite so good. And just on that note, if you're an athlete of mine, if you're an athlete with another coach, 
everything that I said here, as far as like why I'm thinking these things and how I'm, you know, designing my own program and everything, those should be things that not only your coach is thinking, we'll assume that your coach is thinking those things, but you as an athlete, you should be communicating those things, right? You should be communicating to that coach. Like, I feel this. This is, the, I, I don't feel super consistent with my squat right now. I really like this. Or like, I'm feeling like the pause squats are making me not feel like I'm in rhythm. Whatever, right? Like it can be really good stuff that you'd like to continue to see, right? Like there are certain areas that, that we see my program looks very, very similar all the way through multiple blocks in a row. Belt squatting, right? Doesn't go away. I don't have any intention of making it go away, right? I know for a fact that has been one of the main things that helps, right? So other things around it are being manipulated to be able to keep maximizing something that I know is helping and just manipulate the other things based on where I am at the moment. And that's a big deal. So anyway, as a, as a final thought on the block, the last thing here is the conventional deadlifts. Um, basically the same thought as like stiff leg deadlifts or RDLs. I'm going after that hip strength, back strength overall. And if you're planning on going to the Corrupted Strength Seminar uh, later in the year, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be uh, participating in the tandem deadlift with Brandon Petrie. So I have to be ready to be able to pull a, a heavy conventional single. So some of that is actually <laughs> me actually just wanting to be ready for, for that as well. But I've seen good carryover with it for, uh, for my sumo. Anyway, so that is the, I guess, recap for, for week one of this block. Um, let me know what you think. I, I think probably, I don't know, we'll see. I, I can see the, the recap of the total block being very productive by you know sitting and talking about it um, and, and less going day by day. I, I think that there's a good chance that I just want to, to give my thoughts as a whole on the block and kind of where it develops. So it, it may actually be more productive for me to sit and talk at the end of the block than the beginning of the block. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. I, I think that there, there could be some opportunities to, to be able to do some coaching like I did with the back extensions if I do it this style. Um, but I have opportunities to do that anyway. So if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.